Folks, the year I saw Koski situation is getting much worse. With one assist in nine games in his second year in the NHL, I'm starting to see a lot of fans turning on him. But how has your Koski been playing this season for the Habs? Could we see him potentially turn around and bring some hope for the Habs? Or could we see things get much worse and maybe even an AHL send down in the future? Make sure you watch till the end for the full breakdown and all the latest Habs news. And hit that subscribe button if you are new for more hockey and Habs content just like this all throughout the year because my goodness with the way this team is you won't want to miss a thing now Yuri Slavkovsky's time with the Montreal Canadiens has been a very controversial thing of course being drafted first overall back in the 2022 NHL draft by Montreal created some massive expectations being drafted not just first overall but ahead of players like Shane Wright and Logan Cooley let alone the defenseman that went pretty high too in Simone Metz and David Juracek but after all there was still a lot of hope because of the potential power forward game you can get out of him and a lot of comparisons were made to Miko Ranton and a player that has become such an influential part of not just the ABS but the NHL and one of the NHL's best wingers. The blueprint was there for potentially Slavkowski to go on that road, but so far, it has been a disaster. Of course, we all know how it went in his first year, about as bad of a first overall picks rookie season as he could really get. In 39 games, he got four goals, six assists for 10 points. Of course, would have a season-ending injury, which would be the worst thing for his development as he couldn't even play in the AHL or any other league to get more games. And with what we saw in his first year with the lack of great speed at the NHL level, consistency in his decision making, the lack of confidence in his shot and his overall game, those were massive issues. The fact that he wasn't getting playing time consistently. Unfortunately for the Habs though, again, he would never be able to find that confidence with Montreal, especially with the limited playing time and would finish with 10 points in 39 games and that injury which would postpone a lot of his development. But coming into this year, the expectations were much bigger, much higher for him to actually look like he belonged in the NHL. And you can see in his first game of the season versus the Toronto Maple Leafs, he looked incredible. Got an assist for one point, had a plus two on that line of Newhook and Doc. All three of those players were exceptional in that game and really had a great showing as that new second line for Montreal. But you can see since that defeat versus Toronto, the production has not been there. Over his last eight games, he has zero points. And sure, there's been some hits and some blocks sprinkled in here and there, but for the most part, he's gotten some pretty good playing time here of Montreal, but has yet to have have any production from it and it's really unfortunate man because i think we're really starting to see the effects of that curvy doc season ending injury not just for doc's development but especially for slavkoski i think new hook has floated decently well since then but he's missing doc but i think especially for slavkoski doc was a player that he could really work off of as a speedy centerman who he could play make off of as well and we just haven't been able to see that recently of course we've now had the line of new hook josh anderson and uri slavkoski which has been, just been an absolute abysmal atrocity since it's been created i mean we love marty st louis here on this channel but that line just has made zero sense from day one and day in day out it has been horrible and it's really quite unfortunate you can see in terms of the expected goals for percentage right now you look at both lines the new hook anderson slavkowski line is 44 percent while the new hook slavkowski dog line which unfortunately was only able to play two games was at a 67 percent the two lines have been staggeringly different and i'm still still surprised that this line is still going but to me the player that benefited the most from the dock line was Uri Slavkowski at least when we compare from year to year performance and the player that's getting the most hurt because of this new Josh Anderson line is probably Uri Slavkowski he's made some good plays there has been some good passes here and there. you have this sequence in the Columbus game just a fantastic pass by Slavkowski to spring Josh Anderson but of course he does nothing with it. I think we can all agree that he's made some good individual plays and has looked better than he did last year but the bar for that is incredibly low sure he looks much better than last year but it was almost impossible for him to not you take for instance the five on five expected goals for per 60 and of course Vera Slavkowski had a 41 percent last year pretty rough but a 44 percent this year so even though it is an upgrade it's still not what you want to see now what has taken a considerable jump is the expected goals for per 60 with Slavkowski at a 318 instead of last year at a 211 but you can also see a big jump in the defensive play and not for the greatest reason with a 3.99 expected goals against per 60 compared to a 2.97 last year so so far Slavkowski has been a much more high event hockey which has definitely been fun but it also has some downsides still though you can tell Slavkowski is learning but again that progress has been minimal it hasn't been this leap that I think a lot of people wanted to see out of Slavkowski in his second year especially given top six minutes one of the biggest reasons Slavkowski's performance was abysmal last year was the lack of real play lack of real consistency really being steep onto that fourth line for the most
most part. This year, though, he's giving top six minutes. And sure, obviously, Josh Anderson has been a real nuisance to his side this year. Now, here is the double-edged sword when it comes to Uri Slavkowski because, of course, he is 19 years old and giving up on 19-year-olds usually doesn't pan out in the greatest way. Just look at Jack Hughes. But this is a much different player and a much different situation. With Jack Hughes, we could always see the elite talent and skill set there. It was just about putting it together and the NHL physicality. With Uri Slavkowski, when he was drafted, a lot of the reason because of that was because of how much of a monster he could become, how much of a monster he is physically, how much of a good player he can be at the NHL level. But we have yet to really see too many great signs of that. There has been some good flashes, but we have really yet to see him put up consistency in a total season. I mean, his last Liga year. This is something that I think a lot of people kind of really forget. To me, in his final Liga season, he got 10 points in 31 games. He didn't get the biggest opportunity, but I thought his production and play in the Liga left a lot to be inspired, especially for a first overall pick. There were times in the Liga where I thought he was getting outbattled. Was a player that needed to bring more pace to the game, and especially in a league like the Liga, that's a little bit concerning for how high he was drafted. And it's where we go to a player that has been often compared to your Isakoski and Miko Ranson. And here's the biggest thing for me with Miko Ranson is the fact that to me, he has been a much better player throughout all of this process than Slavkoski. If we're going to be comparing players, in his last year in the Liga, he got 28 points in 56 games and looked like a lot more of a complete player in the Liga, in my opinion, back then. He might not have had the insane international statistics that Uri Slavkoski did, but in his true league play, to me, I think Miko Ranson was far superior. And you can see he only played nine games in his rookie season in the NHL in North America and was mostly in the AHL where he dominated 60 points in 52 games looked solid at the world at world juniors look uh, decent at the world championships as well but he was able to develop in a much quieter situation and a position where it lended to his confidence people don't really remember that his early seasons in Colorado he didn't really play too much and when he did play it was kind of just okay I mean he got nine games but he didn't get a point in his first year but that AHL season that seasoning really helped and you can see on the complete disaster that was the 2017 Avalanche in his rookie season, he got 38 points, 20 goals in 75 games. And to me, that was a humongous leap. But we were already starting to see the physical presence that was there. And especially considering how bad Colorado was, that production wasn't really laughed at whatsoever. It was actually very good. But imagine if Slavkowski took this route all along. He might not have gotten injured like he did in the NHL last season if he started out in the AHL, where he probably should have started at. I mean, the confidence would be way higher there were some players to cook off last year and if he was in the AHL this season if he is in the AHL this season you got players like Joshua Waugh who are being absolute studs right now and really using the AHL time that time with Laval to perfection but here we see Uri Slavkowski with poor line mates so far players that aren't working with him not really gelling at the NHL level still and how do you not send him to the AHL how do you not send him to Laval right now that's my biggest question. To me, for Montreal, it has to be pride. It has to be, oh, we can't send our first overall pick to the back to the AHL after he's already been in the NHL for so long. We just can't let that happen. But how can you let this play continue to happen? How can you let this lack of true total progress continue to happen? It's probably what the Rangers should have done with Lafreniere. It's probably what the Rangers should have done with Capocacco as well. Give them at least a little bit of AHL seasoning there to get some confidence back up. We're seeing it again with another other top rated prospect that's been burst right into the NHL that patience was needed with Slavkowski patience is still needed if he is going to be in the NHL the rest of this year but right now it's not looking all too hopeful all I gotta say though is that the Habs cannot give up on Yuri Slavkowski and keep him in the same position because of course we saw what happened with Jesperi Kotkaniemi drafted third overall by the Habs back in 2018 and at age 23 still uh, three still still an incredibly young player we're now getting to see what he's been able to do with Carolina 43 points and 82 games in 2023 and so far a point per game with Carolina 10 games through the season he has been a revelation for the Canes and his defensive game has always been superb for them but that offense is now starting to truly show for them too and for Montreal they need to do what's right the Canes have given Yasuberi Kakini patience they've given him confidence they've been building about him up year after year getting him more or not more opportunity year after year as well and he's been able to seize it for Montreal they have to do what's right by Yuri Slavkov 
Koski though right now. Give him patience that Kakanyemi was not afforded. I mean, dude, not even Jesperi Kakanyemi. Look at what AHL time did for Cole Caulfield. You can see over the past couple of years, he's gotten some decent AHL time, played two games in 2021. But of course, we saw some struggles early on in that 2022 season for Cole. He got sent down to the AHL, got five points in six games, was really able to start cooking offensively, got that confidence and was brought back up and was glorious for Montreal. It was a completely different player. And to me, Slavkowski could benefit from the same exact thing. And like Cole Caulfield shows, it doesn't even have to be for too long. It could be for six games, but that type of play, that type of experience can go a long way. This is a player to me that runs best when his confidence is at an all-time high. And we saw that in the first couple games with Doc and Newhook, how they looked fantastic together. And that confidence led to good results. We're seeing now, of course, with the complete lack of confidence that he has in his teammates and himself in the NHL right now, that's really coming back to bite him. I think he needs to go back to Laval. And I think, of course, with all of the discussions about him having a great mindset and a great uh, voice and a great personality, that he would probably handle going back to the AHL pretty well if those things are true. To me, with Slavkowski, I think he is a kid that could handle the AHL fantastically. And if he is put on a top six on a great power play, actually given some power play time, that to me could be one of the biggest differences in his career. It doesn't have to be for too long. It could be just for like a few weeks, maybe a couple months. But to me, Slavkowski, given AHL time, it's what he needs in his career right now. With Montreal, though, with how they're winning, I'm not sure if they're going to want to change up that lineup too much. But that's just the thing. I don't care if Montreal is winning right now and looking like a solid team. You do what's best for your prospects because that's what this rebuild is all about. And to me, with Slavkowski, you give him a little bit of time in the AHL of Laval absolutely dominating on offense right now, and that could be just what's good for him. I mean, have Wah and Slavkowski together. Find a way to make that pair happen. Give them some power play time together, and I'm sure Slavkowski he's going to find some good confidence. I mean, Joshua Waugh is probably already a better line mate than Josh Anderson right now. I'm willing to bet on that. But man, at this point, again, the sadness of the Kirby Doc injury continues to come because if that injury never happened, I think New Hook would have even more goals up to this point. I think Slavkowski would be in a much better position, but I just think it's obvious that Slavkowski could use some more confidence, use some more opportunity here. And I'm just not really sure if the Habs can give him the line mates he needs right now with how this team is constructed the rest of the lineup is playing fantastically and i'm not really sure how much you're wanting to really move that and to me i just don't think it's a fit right now with montreal if i were the habs i would send him down to laval get him cooking for a little bit again it doesn't have to be for too long but give him a couple of weeks get him to a point per game get him a ton of goals on that power play and to me Slavkowski could come back better than ever look a lot more complete at the nhl level and to me just that little tiny bit of ahl spice could lead to a lot more success in the future but i want to know in the comments down below what do you guys think of the uri Slavkowski situation right now what would you do with him in his second year in the nhl would you send him back down to the ahl would you want to experiment more with the line mates what would you do with slavkowski would you put him on a third line fourth line first line how would the lines look like what would his line mates look like what would you want them to look like and of course let us know how you guys think slavkowski will do throughout the rest of his nhl career do you think this is a prospect that's doomed for failure or do you think he can come back in a big way progress a lot more over these next few years let us know all your thoughts down below of course hit that like button hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell and, of course, share the video with all the hockey and Habs fans you guys know online. And click on this card for all my hockey content right in one playlist. Not all my hockey content. All my hockey rankings content right in one playlist. My name is Nathan, and I will see you in the next one. Have a great day, and goodbye.